Hey guys, welcome back to Money's Book List. So we're going to continue in the series of my top three favorite mystery series. Um, the second one is by an author by the name of Theodora Goss or Ghost. Um, it's G-O-S-S. -S. Um, and the first book is called A Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter. It is a series. Um, and in this book, you're introduced to five main characters and they're all ripped or pulled, not ripped, but pulled from the classics. Uh, the first character you meet is Mary Jekyll. You then meet her sister, Diana Hyde. You're then, then you're, you meet um, Catherine Monroe and Justine Frankenstein. And last, you meet uh, Beatrice Rappuccini. Um, and Beatrice, Beatrice Rappuccini is from a short story called uh, Rappuccini's Daughter. And in the first book, you're introduced to them, you kind of figure out what they have in common, which is that their fathers are either scientists or madmen. I like to say that. They're either scientists or madmen, and they have used the offspring, their daughters, as as science experiments. So you, the first book, you just, you're introduced to them, and you find out how Diane, you find out the relationship between Diane and Mary, of course, because they're from the same man. They're actually sisters. And um, well, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. You're also introduced to the great detective Sherlock Holmes. They meet up with him to help solve the Whitechapel murders. Um, so you have the element of Jack the Ripper there. And you're also trying to figure out when, why you're trying to figure out um, the, the Whitechapel murders and, and, and how their fathers used them as, as experience as experiences as experiments. They just they, they create this bond. And the greatness, the great thing about this book is that it talks about women's women's issues and it also talks about how you empower yourself as a woman and it's not done in a very heavy handed way. It's very, it's very subtle and just steady. You just, you just realize these women just grow as, as humans and as lead, you know, as independent beings, as women in the situation that they're in, because Mary is all alone in this book at the beginning. Her mother just died. Her finances are bad. And she just has to figure her way out in this world. And she does. And she brings along some wonderful ladies with her. You also find out in this first book that um, there's a society that their fathers were a part of. And, and they're trying to figure out who has created the society and why would the society let them do this to women. Um, so yeah, the first book is a very good journey. Um, if you haven't read any of the classics, those, those classics basically, which are Dr. Jekyll, and Mr. Hyde, um, Monroe's Island, the, uh, Frankenstein, and of course, Rappuccini's Daughter. If you haven't read those, then, and any Sherlock Holmes and anything about the Whitechapel murder mysteries, you don't have to read them to enjoy this book. That's what I was trying to say. You don't. But if you have read them, it's like an added bonus onto it. It's not a, it's not a requirement. It's just an added bonus that if you read them. So let me tell you about the style of the writing of these books. So the writing of these books, the way the story is told is that Catherine is, is written these books about their adventures and she's editing it. And as she's editing, well, I, I think it's editing because I, I, I find a hard way. Anyway, she's writing the book and as she's writing the book, People are chiming in to remind her about stuff or to better explain stuff or to just say that's not how it happened. So like you'll be reading along, you'll be like, oh, the story will be like, and the, you know, Mary and Diane and Catherine went to the store to get cheese. And then Diane will chime in from like, I don't know if that's called the fourth wall. I know because the fourth wall would be talking to you. I don't know. Anyway, Diane inserts herself in the story and she goes we didn't go to the store to get cheese we went to the store to get butter we just didn't see any butter so we got cheese instead and then the story goes on and they're like well they bought cheese and then they went home I hope I described it good I don't think I did but that's kind of what happens is like they're editing the story as she's writing it slash reading it to you 
So in the first book, I didn't mind that format. In the second book, it was kind of it was kind of too much. I thought they did it way too much. It bothered me in the second book a lot more. Yeah, I don't know why, but I did. Anyway, let's get to the second book. The second book is called European Travel of Monstrous Gentlewomen. And basically in the second book, uh, Mary receives a letter from her old um, governess saying, hey, there's this young lady who has experience, is, is experiencing the same thing you guys have. Basically, her father is Van Helsing and we, and we think he's doing something horrible to her. So they go to save her. Um, and I don't remember the city that they go to. I don't know why I want to say Budapest, but I don't know. It's not Budapest. I think I want to say Budapest because of vampires. And vampires are in the book. I think that's why I want to say it, but I don't remember that. Vienna. Vienna. Vienna is her final destination. They're trying to get to Vienna to save her. And you meet. You meet everyone from... Oh my gosh, you you meet, oh, what is her name? The the main love interest of Sherlock Holmes from his series, the one woman that got away. Oh my gosh, what is her name? It's right there too. But you meet her and you meet, it's interesting too, of how they bring her story into the story about how like she's not, it's just really good and how... Her and Sherlock are not together anymore, but they still have this reverence for each other. But it's clear that now Sherlock has a thing for Mary, and Mary is like slightly inferior of her, feels, you know, feels inferior to her, but she's not really inferior to her. And you just enjoy like that, that, you know, real recognize real, and then real start feeling a little not so real, but then other real is like, you still real, you still real, get your life. So I appreciated that. I just appreciated the way that two women who clearly care for the same guy, I appreciated how they they didn't compete for his affection. They just appreciated that, okay, I see why he thought you were the, you know, the bee's knees, you know. And that was nice. I appreciated that. Like there wasn't no like cattiness in there trying to, you know, who Sherlock liked the best. It wasn't that. It was just real recognized, real. And it was nice. It was really nice. I like that. So, uh, wow, this is shorter than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to wrap this up really fast. It's a really, the both series are very good. There's a, there's kind of a cliffhanger um, at the end of the second book. So, you know, or I feel like there's going to be a third book. I'm really excited about the third book. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed the series. And the only thing that I keep telling, I keep warning people about is the fact that those, those chime-ins, it, it, it can get on your nerves. The first book, I didn't mind it. I think it was because it was refreshing and, um, I wasn't expecting it. And the second book, I was just kind of like, okay, Diane, if you say one more, Diana, if you say one more thing, I'm going to reach this book and choke you. Um, so it, that kind of bothered me, but yeah, I like the series. It's my second favorite series that I've read in the last few years. My third favorite, we're going to get to um, in the next video, which will probably be in a few days. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye.